fourth graders. Yesterday, um, we finished the autopsy, figured a few things out, and now we are on our way back home because um, he was late for dinner. So we're learning a little bit about his mom. It took a special kind of person to be a field biologist, and my mom was one of the best. I'm not just saying that. She'd won all sorts of awards for con for from con conservation organizations, and any time there was and any time there was a magazine article about her, important scientists lined up to say how great she was. She was really smart, but also tough enough to deal with the hardships of living far from civilization. In the Congo, she'd face hungry lions, rampaging elephants, blood-sucking leeches, and most and most dangerous of all, poachers. She was incredibly patient. When she'd, run, when she'd begun her research, she'd watched her gorillas 12 hours a day, every day for an entire year until they finally began to accept her as one of their own. After spending so long out there, she felt the gorillas were her family. It wasn't like she was putting them in competition with me though. In fact, I thought it was nice. You couldn't find another biologist in the whole world who cared more about her subjects. Given her adventurous background, it might seem surprising that mom now enjoyed working at a zoo, but given the war, staying in the Congo wasn't an option. And besides, Fun Jungle wasn't merely a zoo. J.J. McCracken wanted to be a world-class research facility too. Dad claimed that, that, Dad claimed this wasn't because J.J. was interested in science though. There were big tax breaks for research facilities. J.J. had told Martin Degato to recruit the best of the best and where gorillas were concerned, that was my mom. Martin had offered to double what mom was getting paid in Atlanta, but to his surprise, she wasn't interested in money. Field biology doesn't pay much. She'd gone into it. She hadn't gone into it expecting to get rich. Instead, what she cared about was research, and the key to doing good research was an exceptional animal habitat. So mom had begun her work at Fun Jungle long before we, mo we moved there, serving as, um, of t serving as technical consultant on the design of Monkey Mountain. Under her supervision, the exhibits were altered from mere viewing areas into dynamic living spaces where the animals could thrive. Mom knew what gorillas and, and other primates would enjoy in their new homes, and she knew what she and other scientists would need to study. With her input, Monkey Mountain became the world's finest man-made habitat for gorillas, as well as chimpanzees, orangutans, gibbons, colobus monkeys, and ring-tailed lemurs. JJ had cut similar deals with other scientists to bring them to Fun Jungle, allowing them to help design their exhibits as well. Therefore, our trailer park was a who's who of famous field biologists. One of the world's greatest elephant researchers lived on the other side of us. A polar bear specialist lived on the other side of that. Fun Jungle had found one, had found one other incentive to, to lure mom there, giving dad a job too. That was great for all of us, as it meant that for the first time in my life, dad was around more often than he wasn't. And yet, Dad still craved an adventure now and then, so his contract allowed him to do an occasional assignment for someone else. That's why only Mom was waiting for me at home that night. Dad was in China taking pictures of great pandas for Outside Magazine. I banged through the front door. There was no try point in trying to sneak in. Our trailer only had three rooms, and after so much time in the jungle, Mom had a highly attuned sense of hearing. She'd probably heard me crunching across the dry crabgrass from 100 yards away. That was another reason the TV being on was odd. Mom always said it was too noisy and interfered with her ability to hear the world around her. Once I came inside, I understood why it was on. It was tuned into the local news, which was all about Henry. This wasn't much of a surprise. J.J. McCracken's decision to, to build Fun Jungle was the biggest news in that part of Texas since the Battle of the Alamo. The local TV stations had covered it nonstop from the moment it, announced, it was announced. There were daily reports on how many tourists were coming, how well the park was running, and how soon it, it would be until a new attraction were opened or a new hotel were built. Anytime a new animal arrived, it was the lead story. I'd seen a newspaper survey that said Henry was the second most recognized celebrity in the state, just behind J.J. McCracken and ahead of quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. So his death was huge news. They, they weren't actually showing Henry when I came in. That was fine with me. I'd see plenty of Henry that day, inside and out. Instead, they were interviewing Summer McCracken's, Summer McCracken, JJ's daughter, about how she was handling J Henry's death. In the time since she'd given her father the idea of Fun Jungle Summer, um, Fun Jungle, Summer, now 13 years old, had become quite famous herself. 
she'd never really understood why. Sure, she was rich and lots of people said she was pretty, but she didn't really do anything except go to boarding school. And yet everyone was still fascinated by her. At the supermarket checkout, there were always at least one magazine with her on the cover, claiming to have the latest details on what she was up to and who she was dating. Even the employees of Fun Jungle were crazy about her. I'd overheard several excitedly discussing rumors that Summer was home from school and might even Dej a visit to the park. It was ridiculous. I watched the end of her interview. Summer had a lot of composure for someone only a year older than me, but maybe if people had been interviewing me by my whole life, I would have been like that too. Despite being obviously upset about Henry, Summer managed to be well-spoken. I think we're all really shocked by this, she told the reporter, not just my family, but all the people who work at Fun Jungle and everyone who's ever come to see Henry here. I wondered if Summer didn't know what Henry was really like, or if she just faked the heartfelt stuff. If she, if she was, she would have given Pete Thwack a run for his money in the PR department. It's a terrible shame, Summer went on, but I think it's important to note that the last moments of Henry's life were happy ones. You were with Henry, weren't you? I always, I, it always surprised me how mom could sneak up on me so quietly. Even within the confines of the trailer, she had mastered moving silently during her years with gorillas. I wheeled around to find her standing right behind me, arms crossed. She was wearing her standard work outfit, a khaki shirt and shorts. I hesitated, trying to determine if it was worth lying, but finally decided it was pointless. Mom could, al mom could always see right through me. How'd you know? I, you smell like dead hippo. Of course. Mom also had honed her sense of smell in the Congo. When you, got, when you spent a lot of time in the jungle, it paid to know when something dangerous was creeping up on you. The way most humans sense danger was through sight, but the way most animals did was through hearing and smell, which were more effect effective over long distances, especially at night. Dad said Mom could smell a lion from half a mile away ev and even tell if it was male or female. He always claimed to be joking about this last part, but I think it might be true. I hadn't even been that close to the hippo. At the nearest, I'd been at least 10 feet away, but I guess the stench had stunk with me. Your dinner was ready half an hour ago. Oh, sorry, your dinner was ready an hour and a half ago, Mom said. I was worried sick about you. Why didn't you call? I couldn't. That's no excuse, Theodore. I was almost ready to call park security. I was watching the autopsy. Henry was murdered. That surprised Mom enough to silence her for a moment. She turned off the TV so as to give me her full attention and then asked, what are you talking about? I told her the whole story. She listened straight through without interrupting. I'll bet most other mothers would have punished me the moment they heard I'd snuck into the autopsy, but Mom was different. She was naturally curious and she loved animals even more than I did. If someone had done something to harm Henry, she wanted to know about it. While she listened, she reheated my dinner and set it before me. I was so hungry, I dug right in. It took the whole meal for me to finish telling everything that had happened. And once I was done, Mom sat silently for a while. Finally, she said, that's very interesting, but technically you don't have any proof Henry was murdered. Doc said he was. Did he really, or did he just suspect it? I had to think about that, just going over the, autop the, whole, autop going over the whole autopsy again in my mind. Finally, I admitted, he just suspected it, I guess, but something had to make all those holes in Henry's intestine. True, but you have no way of knowing if it was someone fed it to Henry on purpose or not. I frowned. That wasn't exactly the response I'd been hoping for. I guess not. Mom glanced at my empty plate and then nodded to the sink. I took all my dirty things over and cleaned them. While I did, Mom cut me a, a slice of chocolate cake and poured a glass of milk. Murder, murder is a very serious charge, she said. When you say that, you're insinuating that someone purposely planned to kill Henry. Now, can you think of a reason anyone would want to do that? Doc said he could. Mom paused ever so slightly while putting the milk back in the fridge. I could tell she was surprised by this, but she didn't want me to know. Did he say what that was? No, Martin seemed to know what he was talking about too. Mom set the cake on the table. I think you must have misunderstood them. I can't think of any reason someone would want to murder an animal. People do it all the time. It's called hunting. I mean, in a zoo. A lot of people here don't, didn't like Henry. That doesn't mean they'd want to kill him. I shrugged, but I knew Mom was right. I couldn't imagine anyone hating Henry so much they murder him. But then, I couldn't understand why anyone would want to kill an animal with a gun either. I'd seen the poachers could do in Africa, shooting an elephant for just its tusks, or a rhino for just its horn. It was always unbelievably horrible and cruel. How could anyone think an elephant's tooth was beautiful and not the elephant itself? And though I'd never seen the results of the war in Congo, I'd heard more than enough about them. 
All I could figure was adults were capable of a lot of bad behavior for reasons that were far beyond me. So even though I didn't, it didn't make sense that someone would murder Henry, I didn't doubt someone would do it. I tried to think of a way to explain this to mom, but I couldn't. Besides, something in her demeanor told me she didn't want to hear it anyhow. Finally, I said, do you think it was just an accident? I'm not saying someone purposely fed, um, didn't, I'm not saying someone didn't purposely feed Henry something they shouldn't have, she said. People do lots of cruel and stupid things. When I was studying at the Bronx Zoo, there was a sea lion pool. People would throw coins in it all the time. The sea lions kept eating the coins and getting sick. So the zoo put up a sign warning everyone not to do it. And people kept doing it anyhow. That wasn't, this wasn't garbage. This was money, money they could have used. There was no point to it but they kept doing it and eventually one of the sea lions got sick and died. The zoo ultimately had to post security guards to keep people from throwing their money away. I'd eaten my cake quickly. Mom took my plate to the sink. She seemed saddened by the whole conversation. So yes, maybe someone killed Henry, she said, but I don't think it's murder. It just, it's just what, peop what humans have done. Um, it's just what humans have always done to animals. Before I could argue the point, she turned me towards the bathroom and said, now go take a shower. You're making the whole trailer smell like dead hippo. Mom always went to sleep early and got up early. That was another habit left over from living in the Congo. There wasn't much, to, there, there hadn't been much to, to do at night there and the gorillas were usually up an hour before dawn. I lay in bed reading until I saw the lights go out under her door. I waited another 15 minutes to make sure she was asleep and then I slipped out of bed, called the San Antonio police and asked to talk to the homicide division. I felt bad for sneaking around behind my mom's back, but I have felt I had to do something. Mom hadn't been there for the whole autopsy. She hadn't heard the concern in Doc's voice when he told Martin about the holes in Henry's intestines. I had. Sergeant Tustin, how may I help you? I'd like to report a murder, I said. Did you witness it, perform it, or simply find a body? Sergeant Tustin sounded surprisingly bored. Uh, the last one, sort of? You sort of found a body. You mean you only found part of one? No, I didn't find it, someone else did, but I heard that the victim might have been murdered. How did you come by this information? From the doctor who performed the autopsy. The coroner? If the coroner found evidence of a murder, he would have already reported it. No, it wasn't a coroner who, it wasn't a coroner who did this. Then what the, did, what kind of doctor did it? A veterinarian. There was a pause at the end of the, at the end of the line. Wait, Sergeant Tustin said, sounding annoyed. This is about an animal? Yes, you're calling the homicide division about an animal? Because homicide's murder, right? What's your name, kid? I hesitated. This wasn't going the way I'd expected. I'd rather not say. You wouldn't? Okay, then. There was some typing on the other end of the line. Tustin was using a computer. You're calling from 512-555-2647. I gulped. Uh... Fitzroy residence, Tustin continued. 555 means you're out by fun jungle, so... Oh, no. What? This isn't about the hippo. What's his name? Harry? Henry. Yes. The vet thinks he might have been. Listen, kid. We've got our hands full here investigating the murders of people. We don't investigate dead animals. I mean, animals kill each other all the time. That's what they do. That's why they're animals. Somebody finds their cat chewed up in half chewed in half by a dog, we don't go out and arrest the dog, you know? But this is different, Henry was famous. Really? Here's what I recommend, drop by the lion cage. I understand nine times out of 10, when a hippopotamus is murdered, it's the lion who's done it. I'm serious. Yeah, sure you are, this isn't funny anymore. Keep it up and I'll send a team of police over there. Good, for you. Oh, I didn't know what else to say except, sorry, I didn't mean any trouble. Goodbye, Fitzroy, Sergeant Tustin hung up. I put down the phone and realized my hand was trembling. My heart was hammering in my, in my chest. How had that happened? I'd always thought calling the police to report a crime was the right thing to do. I'd assumed they would be eager to investigate the crime, like the policemen I'd seen in the movies. But Sergeant Tustin had seemed more interested in arresting me. Outside the trailer, someone sneezed. It wasn't that loud. If it had happened in the middle of the day at Fun Jungle, I probably wouldn't have noticed, but in the stillness of the night, it might as well have been a gunshot. I quickly looked at the window shade, peering into the darkness. No one was there. I listened carefully, picking up the faint sound of what might have been footsteps hurrying away. Part of me wanted to run outside to see who had been there, but a bigger part of me thought it was a bad idea. If someone was spying on me, chasing after them could be dangerous. Had someone been spying on me, though? 
I wondered if I was being paranoid after, un after my unsettling call with, with Sergeant Tustin. There, was another, there were other reasons someone might have been outside our home, even though it was the furthest edge of the trailer park. We had plenty of neighbors, many of whom worked odd hours and were comfortable in the outdoors. Any one of them could have been taking a circuitous route home to their trailer. Or someone could have stepped outside to do some stargazing. Or maybe someone had actually headed, um, was actually headed to the hot tub for once, but had been distracted by a possum or a deer. Man, maybe it had, been, it had even been a possum or a deer. Animals sneeze on occasion, and they didn't sound any different than humans. I made sure the trailer door was locked tight, just in case. Then I slipped back into bed, trying to calm myself, thinking everything through. I seemed to be the only person who wanted to know who'd killed Henry. Doc had hidden the proof. My own mother hadn't believed me, and the police thought I was just a prank caller. But it seemed to me that if someone really had a murdered Henry, that it was important. If the killer got away with the crime once, they why wouldn't they do it again? What if more animals ended up dead because no one was doing anything to help them? If there was a murder, people needed to know about it, and if I couldn't convince anyone to do any one of that, then I'd have to find evidence that would. I was going to have to investigate Henry's murder myself. You'll have to see how he does that tomorrow. <laughs>